Next up, we have Tony Ottaviano, Managing Director and CEO of Linetown Resources. Uh, Tony is a highly credentialed global mining executive with a wide ranging strategic, operational, commercial and corporate experience. He's held senior executive roles with two of the world's largest mining companies, BHP and Rio Tinto, leading teams across the mining value chain from mining exploration and strategy to M&A. Uh, since joining Linetown in 2000, uh, 2021, uh, Tony has overseen the delivery of the DFS of the Kathleen Val Valley project, the execution of offtake agreements with LGES, Tesla and, for uh, and Ford, and final investment decision clearing the way for construction. During the past 12 months, uh, under Tony's leadership, the company has grown from 14 to over 150 people. Uh, mining operations have commenced or is being stockpiled, and the processing plant construction is well underway for first production mid-year. Thank you. Thanks, team. Um, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm standing here today again, uh, my third diggers, and very proud of the achievements we've done since my last presentation here. When I stood here 12 months ago, we hadn't received our mining approvals yet. We had six caravans on site, and we'd just started our planning around the accommodation facility. 12 months down the track, not only have we completed our um, accommodation facility, but we're already mining. We're producing um, over a million tonnes. We've got DSO product ready to go. So I'm very proud of this achievement over the last 12 months. Notwithstanding, we've had to fight off a, a takeover approach, but um, we're very focused on business as usual and delivering a great project. Just what I'm going to talk about today, um, the, the uh, cautionary statement, I always get some amazed with these. The font gets smaller and there's more words. So I hope uh, you can have fun reading it. Our strategic highlights. We are a globally significant project. And I speak about this in a number of ways. The tier one definition, you know, the scale, the grade, the position on the cost curve. And there's a th fourth dimension, which is location. It's becoming even more pertinent, and I'll talk about this later in the presentation. We clearly have a robust thematic, but I'm not going to show the customary supply and demand curve for the next 20 years or the next 10 years. I'm going to do a deeper dive in the next three years to give you some insight as to the challenge we're facing. We're driving a project to completion. We're less than 12 months out from first production. ESG is our core DNA. And I want to try and describe today that we're trying to do ESG more than just on PowerPoint. Real, tangible actions. And I'll show that in a, a slide later on. The strategy. When you have an asset like Kathleen Valley, its scale, its position on the cost curve, it will underpin further investment. But I'm not going to simply follow the downstream course if it doesn't make good business sense. So we're understanding what that means and we've asked ourselves a series of strategic questions. And we're using partners that are well versed in this to assist us in that understanding. And finally, we have a very strong leadership group supported by a very committed board. We're employing 30 people a month in order to help us to first production. Our strategy remains firm and consistent. It's all about maximising value at Kathleen Valley, and the focus is to bring it into production. I haven't spent any money on drilling it out and, and expanding the resource. That happens once I generate cash. But at the moment, it's building it and bringing first tonnes on. I've spoken about downstream. That's our second horizon. And I'll have a few slides to describe and understand what we're trying to achieve there. And the final horizon is Lion Town to its full potential. We have our Boldania asset. It's situated in a zone where there are many players and there is many of permutations that could wash out there. But our focus is we're doing a, a scoping study on that and we're doing some metallurgical test work to try and understand how it comes into our overall strategy. <coughs> ESG, it is good for the company and it is good for our stakeholders. On the environmental side, 
we've started construction on our hybrid renewable farm, one of the largest in Australia at 95 megawatts. We will be installing 31,000 solar panels in the coming months. Our five of the largest inland wind turbines that are on the ship on their way out to Geraldton as we speak, from ground to the top of the tip, 210 metres high. And then we've got the associated battery backup plus gas redundancy. And you can see in this picture, we are minimising everything we possibly can to reduce the amount of land disturbance where we install our wind turbines. The social element, our dual partnership. This is deep and very personal to me. On the 17th of November 2021, we signed a NATO title agreement with the Jawal, and they have been partners along the way. They're there on site while we construct. They're there monitoring the work, and under our cultural heritage management plan, if they have an issue while we construct, we sit down, we talk. It's not a one-off. It is a continuous consultation. They're tough, they're firm, but they're pragmatic. And there's a number of things we've co-designed. The Jones Creek, a very symbolic area. We took 63 analysts there yesterday to show them what we're doing, and we asked the chairman of Jual to speak to them about their significance and how we've approached that. It can be done. We are employing a lot of Indigenous contracts in the Jawal area, and we continue to do so. And once we start earning revenue, we will be applying more effort and resources into traineeship and getting more of an ongoing value creation for the Jawal. And finally, governance. If you can't measure, you can't control. But what you measure doesn't always matter. And under the myriad of you know, ESG standards, I get lost myself in those things. But I understand and I've read and I've understood that the GRI standard is the standard that we will back. And our third sustainability report will be grounded in the GRI standard. We're also in the process of getting certification for IRMA. It is a long process. We're a developing company. They don't have a standard for that yet but we're working hand-in-hand hand with them on that. Kathleen Valley, scale, grade and independent. You know, Ron mentioned a resource upgrade at Manor. Today, Dale mentioned a colossal increase in their resource at Pilgangora. Very impressive. But we stand there ourselves with a fantastic ore body at Kathleen Valley. And as I said, we haven't drilled this thing out. The focus is very much bringing it on to production. But the independence is important, especially as in the context of the following slide. The location and the importance of being IRA compliant. When I did my offtake agreements, we didn't have the IRA. My next suite of offtake agreements will have the IRA and the European equivalent well and truly in my focus. If every customer that buys an electric vehicle gets a subsidy that is enabled by a raw material from this country, especially from our mine and some of my colleagues, then we need to get a piece of that action. Now here's the slide I was referring to. I could typically go over a five to ten year period, but why does three years matter? Within the next three years, this operation, our operation, will come into production and ramp up. It also happens to coincide with the usual attention span of an investment fund. <laughs> they don't care about the 10 years. They tell you about the long only and all this sort of stuff, but it's all about quarterly returns. So therefore, let's do a deep dive in the next three years. 42 projects need to be executed flawlessly. 60% of them are greenfield, and 60% of that production is not FTA-approved jurisdictions. This is the challenge. 1.7 million tonnes on an LCE basis needs to come on in the next three years to meet demand. So my view on that is, on average, 
a project is between seven months to two and a half years behind schedule. And I get reminded of that every time I meet the investment community. And I'll explain what we're trying to do to try and keep our project on schedule in a few extra slides further on. This is why I am confident, and I heard Dale's presentation today, and I'm sure Ron agrees, I cannot see the price reverting down to the long term or $800 as Goldman Sachs has in the next three to five years. 42 projects. Okay, Kathleen Valley, less than 12 months before we get into production. And we're, and we're mining, we're open cuts at Kathleen Corner and also at um, Mount Man where the underground will start. 60% of our capital has been committed as of the 30th of June and we have two significant contracts remain to be let. Firstly, the structural mechanical and piping project. That basically will build the wet end of the plant. We've already uh, awarded the dry st um, crushing and screening area and the mill. But the structural mechanical piping for the flotation circuit and the rest of the plant is coming. And finally, I've never seen a more anticipated underground mining contract to be awarded. Um, and that will be imminent as well. And we have tier one contractors bidding for that. Likewise, with some of the other work, we are backing tier one contractors because they will have access to people, they will ac have access to you know, critical equipment in order to support us in building our project to time. We're executing the DSO so we get early revenue, but not just early revenue, and I'll come to the slide at the moment, but also to de-risk our supply chain. This tonnage is in addition to our ore reserve. We mentioned today our funding options. I've got a slide on that. They're well advanced. And finally, you know, pursuing future value, our strategic relationship with Sumitomo that we announced today. Again, we wanted a global player that understands refining, understands marketing deeply as we progress our downstream thinking. Our ore body. It is two ore bodies one mine. The way I think about it, and the way my mine planning engineers think about this, think of this, Tony, Dagosa and Nova. Two separate ore bodies that we will provide their independent infrastructure in order to de-risk. We will have six declines, two will be ventilation, and four will be for production. Two for Mount Man, and two for uh, um, Northwest Flats an entry and an exit, so we don't have to have passing bays in our decline. We're using an established mining method. We've had feedback from our contractors who are bidding for this work, and we've incorporated some of their good ideas, some of their experience. We're not arrogant to assume that we know all, and we've incorporated that in the final revision of the mine plan, which went back out for retender. We are, um, as I mentioned, our underground mining contract is is soon to be um, awarded, and there's significant upfront investment that these contractors need to make in order to execute this mine plan. Our DSO, again, creating value and testing the supply chain. We're targeting our first shipment at the end of this calendar year, and we'll be announcing shortly who our customer is to buy the DSO. We're not trying to set a record on DSO. It's a campaign of 250 to 300,000 tonnes. We're doing that in the next six months. But once we get into first production, if I'm producing more DSO, I would typically put it through my plant because I could produce 6% con. But I have that optionality. Driving the funding to completion, well ahead of our requirement. Today we announced what I believe is an unprecedented amalgamation of government policy banks willing to support our project. US Exim, Kayshaw and Australia's EFA. To me, that underpins the commitment these various governments have on creating a new supply chain outside the current existing players. 
But that's the first piece of the puzzle. As I mentioned, we are still to award our, our underground contract. So this funding requirement that we will complete will service the required project capex that we need to complete the build, which we highlighted in our January announcement. There will be a working capital component. We will be mining at three million tonne per annum rate, which we need to support through working capital. And finally, we'll have the customary reserves that the banks typically want you to have around your creditors. But also, I want to have, because I'm entering the most risky part of my project, which is the commissioning. And I want to go in with a bit of buffer, financially, so I can weather any particular issue that comes our way. Downstream, getting the strategy right up front. I don't want to simply assume that downstream is value maximising. I want to prove it. There's three questions I have to ask myself. Is this strategy robust through the cycles? And we will get cycles. Is it value maximising? Does capturing the integrator or the refiner margin as an integrated supplier, is that the key? And finally, does it give us optionality? It's a big bet to make on a certain chemistry. If I become a lithium hydroxide producer, I'm betting on NCM batteries. The, thing, the things are too fluid and dynamic. Is it LFP? Is it NCM? Is it lithium chloride that then goes on to solid state batteries? It's a big call. I've got to get the strategy right. And we've got Hatch as our technical provider, but Sumitomo will give us insight into this. Look, there is a preliminary hypothesis as why people are going down this path. If you're a spodumene producer, you're the natural partner for hydroxide. And the demand for hydroxide is clear at 23% CAGR. But then you go to the middle slide, a graph, and it shows there will be an oversupply of refining capacity. So the person holding the raw material will have a big say. And finally, this, the graph on the right, it demonstrates that an integrated refiner through the cycles makes a very good return on capital. In fact, even during the down cycle, it's making more than the cost of capital. Now the challenge is, back this up. I've spoken about Sumitomo, so I'll quickly go through this. They will give us insight into whether there's an intermediary product route in the strategy or whether we should go to final product. So our partnership will help surface these things and make us better and more agile in the way we focus on the strategy. Finally, there are some near-term focus areas. We need to secure the final remaining contracts, underpinning our capex, both the underground and the SMP. Once we've locked in our underground provider, I will be able to provide the market with a revised estimate of our operating costs and our working capital requirements. Then we need to conclude our overall funding arrangements, which we're working um, quite extensively on as we speak. And finally, we've got to start planning for our commissioning. We'll start commissioning our dry um, plant probably by the end of the year. So that's not too far away. So that brings me to the end, and I'll just finalise on a video for you. An amazing mining operation has now kicked off. We really are powering and enabling a greener future. It's amazing to see the vision of quality on the project starting to come together now. It's really starting to become the project that we wanted it to be, that is a long-term, 20-plus year mine life operation.
personally picked that music myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tony.